Who is the person behind the camera and why are they showing me this? I think that's always a good question to ask whenever you're consuming content. Anyway, you're looking at Peavine Peak in northern Nevada. I believe the elevation is somewhere around 8,200 feet. At the top are radio towers that can be seen from the surrounding communities of Reno and Sparks. According to some, when the snow disappears from Peavine, that's the time to begin planning. I've always wanted to drive up there and check out the radio towers, so I thought I would go on an adventure. The path to the summit is approximately seven miles of steep, unpaved road. My understanding is, while it's rough in some places, it's manageable in dry weather without a four-wheel drive vehicle, although four-wheel drive is recommended. Now you're probably wondering how I'm going to get up there. Well, I came prepared. I won't document every mile traveled, I'll just try to include some highlights and when I get to the summit I'll tell you a story about some radio traffic I was listening to recently where someone posed a question asking how far one can talk on an HT. In a moment I'm going to show you a brief map of my route because I had to plan that out because I wasn't really sure where I was going today so I wanted to be prepared. Hopefully you can see this okay, I mapped out my adventure. so. I took North Virginia and I turned left at this storage facility. It's not necessarily marked, but I just had to kind of find it. And this is the road that I'll be following. And again, that's approximately seven miles to the summit.
I've reached the summit and the journey up here wasn't as difficult as I thought it was going to be. Here's a view from the top. I hope this video does it justice. And here's all our radio towers. Looks like there's a, another installation over there in the distance. And there's one over there as well. I'll show you some of the gear I brought with me today. So I've got my H8 that I brought along. I've been messing with that quite a bit. And then I've got my TYT TH7800 man pack that I built and I just have some extra radios with me in this bag that I usually carry with me and I've got a hiking pack and then one more bag with just some lithium batteries just in case I need some extras but I figured I'd bring a few things with me today just in case I needed some radios but we'll take a look at the the area around here it's really nice today you can see there's still a little bit of snow over there, but most of it's melting. And there's still some snow out there in the distance in the upper elevations. But we'll take a walk over here and see what the other side looks like. Quite a view. Anyway, now to that story I mentioned in the beginning of the video. Sometimes I like to scan the frequencies to see if anyone's talking about anything interesting. Usually there isn't anything noteworthy. However, a few weeks ago I came across some traffic on one of the GMRS frequencies. And it was a couple of guys who were arguing and for whatever reason the argument you know kind of escalated and after listening to them for a few minutes I figured out that one of the guys was apparently upset with the other because he couldn't give a definitive answer as to how far they could talk on their HTs. Apparently what set this in motion was the response to the question of how far can we talk and the response was it depends. I think that's a reasonable answer because there are some things to consider. Some of those examples include the type of environment you're operating in, what antenna you're using, how much power you're transmitting with, how high an elevation you are, and any potential obstructions your signal has to overcome. I won't get too detailed on the use of repeaters, which can increase the range of communications or the ionospheric propagation of high frequency bands which facilitate long distance communications. I'll focus mainly on the question in the original context of what the range between two HTs is. No repeaters, just simplex radio to radio. Not all radio signals are the same because there are differences in how they travel and how they react when they encounter obstructions. As mentioned, some frequencies are reflected off the atmosphere and can follow the Earth's curvature. These transmissions can sometimes be received by radios below the horizon hundreds of miles away. Generally though, the lower the frequency, the greater distance it can travel. Some examples are CB radio frequencies and some amateur radio frequencies which are in the HF range. And I believe that's usually from about 29 megahertz to 54 megahertz. Some commonly used bands for two-way radios are VHF with a frequency range from about 130 megahertz to 174 megahertz 
and UHF frequency ranges from 400 megahertz to 520 megahertz. Radio waves and higher frequencies travel in straight lines, so you may often hear people refer to this as line of sight. Generally, these line of sight communications can't travel beyond the horizon the way that high frequency signals can. So in the context of the two guys arguing about how far they can talk on their handheld radios, the distance to the horizon would be the maximum communication range for their radios. Of course, an exception would be if they employed the use of a repeater to extend the reach of their signals. Earlier I mentioned many handheld radios can operate on either VHF or UHF and some are able to operate on both. When either the VHF or UHF signals are transmitted from one H2 to another, the radio horizon is comparable to the visual horizon, which is the distance to a point where signals are blocked by the curvature of the Earth. Similarly to the visual horizon, light waves from over the horizon are blocked by the Earth's curvature. With VHF and UHF, instead of the light waves being blocked by the Earth's curvature, it's the radio signals that are blocked. Now, you might be asking which band is better, VHF or UHF? Both have their merits, and I wouldn't say one is intrinsically better than the other. I think an appropriate answer is that depending on what type of environment you're operating in will help determine which band is best. For example, VHF frequencies can penetrate objects better than UHF. VHF can also travel further. If a VHF signal and UHF signal were transmitted over an area without having to overcome any obstacles, then the VHF transmission would be able to travel two times the distance of the UHF transmission. Although VHF signals can pass through obstacles and travel further than UHF signals, that doesn't mean it's always the better option. And the reason is due to the differences in how VHF and UHF signals react with certain obstacles. So for example, if you're inside of a building, UHF might be a better option than VHF because UHF signals are shorter than VHF. In the example of a building, if you're trying to communicate from one side to the other, the building has walls with openings for doors and windows. And depending on what type of building you're in, the walls may be made up of metal studs. Radio waves can't pass through metal, however, the UHF wavelength is approximately one and a half feet wide, while the VHF wavelength is somewhere around five feet wide. So the UHF wavelength size is why its signal passes through doorways and window openings easier than the five foot wide VHF signals. In this operating environment, using VHF is more efficient for transmitting signals through small openings inside a building. While radio signals won't pass through metal, they can pass through many non-metallic objects like drywall, masonry, human bodies, and furniture. However, when a radio signal passes through an object, the signal strength is reduced. Another thing to keep in mind is the denser the obstacle is, the more it weakens the signal strength, which also shortens the range of the transmission. But let's say you're operating outdoors with a clear line of sight, then VHF is likely a better option because, as mentioned earlier, the VHF transmission will travel almost twice as far compared to UHF. However, operating outdoors can pose many challenges as well. An example would be if you're operating in an area with a lot of hills, which can also play a part in obstructing the signal. When trying to calculate distances, you have to factor in the height of your antenna. The distance to the horizon varies depending on your antenna height, and there is a formula for calculating distance to the horizon based on height and if we use a common example of a six foot high antenna at both ends of the transmission, it will th theoretically have a maximum range of approximately six miles. So if we have two people who are approximately six feet tall using five watt HTs, let's say on flat ground with no obstructions, in this scenario, they'll have a range of around six miles. Of course, you're not guaranteed the range will be six miles. It could be less due to the type of antenna you have and if you upgrade to a higher quality antenna over the stock one that 
came with your radio, then you may increase your chances of more efficient communications. One of the misconceptions I hear a lot of about is the idea that the more power a radio has, the further it can transmit. And while the power output of a radio is a factor, a good antenna, in my opinion, is more important. This is probably a good segue into how signal strength factors into the distance it can travel. The stronger the signal, the more it can withstand weakening when passing through obstacles. And this is where a radio's power output measured in watts becomes a factor. So many IHTs on the market have various power output levels. You may have noticed this. For example, they can be between one and five watts. Some are marketed as having higher power output ratings, but it's fairly common to find radios with an output of one to five watts, and the ability to increase the power output will have an effect on how your signal is able to withstand passing through the obstacles between you and the radio on the other end. Anyway, those are some considerations to keep in mind when someone asks you, how far can I talk? For the experienced radio people out there, I know I didn't cover everything there is to know on this topic. I try to keep these videos high level, but if there's anything I may have missed or something you would like to expand on, then please leave a comment below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the view, and that's all for now. Thanks for watching.